Hello and welcome all of you to this session of heat transfer. In the previous lecture, we had uh, discussed the numerical problems regarding the one dimensional steady state heat conduction for the cylindrical and um, cylindrical walls. We had seen how the one dimensional steady state conduction equation can be modified and it can be applied to the cases of composite cylinders. So today, we will uh, carry forward our discussion on the same objective but today uh, this equation this basic general conduction equation will be applied to the spherical surfaces and let us see how does this equation can be modified and it can be generated okay so let us see that now here you can see a, see the diagram of a sphere so I will write the general conduction equation in spherical coordinates and then we will move on with the discussion. So mm, let us consider steady state heat conduction through a sphere which has a inner radius of R1 and it has a outer radius of R2. Okay, the inner surface or the inner radius is maintained at a temperature T1 and the outer surface is maintained at a temperature T2. Now uh, as, as per the geometrical symmetry which lies in the cases of spheres we can understand that it is only radial heat transfer going on for the cases of spherical walls when we are considering one dimensional heat conduction only. Okay. Since we are only considering or only bothered about one dimensional heat conduction, we can understand the uh, these terms like this one and this one, they are associated with the other two dimensions uh, for the heat transfer in spherical coordinates. So, since we have understood that heat transfer in the uh, spherical walls, considering one dimensional heat conduction, can be uh, applied for this mm, this case only so uh, we must have understood that since we are only bothered about the heat transfer uh, in the radial direction we can neglect these two terms because these two terms provides us the information about the heat transfer or the temperature distribution along the two other dimensions which uh, we don't need presently because we are only bothered about one dimensional steady uh, heat conduction problem and this heat conduction is taking along the radial surface or the radial direction so we will be uh, much more uh, we will be concentrating on this factor because this is our term because this term refers the heat transfer in the radial direction and we can neglect these two terms. So we can just erase these two terms because they are not going to provide any help here. Okay, so removing these two terms we can understand. Now we can see that this is the term which provides us the information about the conduction heat transfer in the radial direction only. Now, you know that we are dealing with the problems where we have assumed it is a steady state heat conduction. So we have uh, discussed uh, many times that in case of steady state, this del T becomes zero because in case of steady state, the thermodynamic properties remains unchanged according to the time. Okay, so this del T turns to zero so that this term would become zero. So ultimately, this term can be rewritten as zero and you know that we have already assumed that there is no internal heat generation taking place. So this is your volumetric uh, internal heat generation or thermal energy generation to be more specific. So we can replace this term by zero since, since there is no internal thermal energy generation. Okay, so the equation turns into this. Okay, now we can remove this term. We can remove this term. And uh, therefore, we can move on, uh, move on with the calculations. Now physically, we can draw 
uh, we can assume a strip of a strip of uh, spherical surface which has a thickness of dr and from the center it has a radial distance of r so physically this is the condition which uh, by which we can explain this equation okay so this equation refers to the heat transfer in the spherical surfaces when we have assumed uh, this this heat transfer is taking place from a certain uh, from the center point of the sphere up to a certain distance r okay and the temperature maintained along this strip of this sphere is t okay so therefore we can move on along with this calculation so if we um, integrate on both sides we will get r square delta t dr is equal to the constant okay this is simple integration so it will give you um, c1 as the first constant okay now uh, we can do the simple calculations by rewriting it in this way and we can take it this term here okay before that um, I would like to inform you that I would like to mention that now the terms which were expressed in the partial derivative format now it can be expressed in the regular derivative format okay so it can be rewritten as dt dr so I must uh, tell you that this this uh, step should have been done earlier uh, uh, before doing the integration so initially what you have to do you have to rewrite this equation so let me do it once so that it will clear the concept perfectly so after understanding this equation you need to rewrite this equation in the regular de derivative format okay so I am just rewriting it and we find that it it gives us this equation okay now we can do the initial integration and it will give r square dt dr as your constant so this is your integrating constant and it is c1 okay now uh, we would like to rewrite this equation so we can change the terms and it will become c1 by r square we can also uh, take this dr here so that it would become c1 by r square into dr okay so it would be dr now we will integrate in both the sides and you will find t can be represented as minus c1 by r you know this is very simple integration it will be minus c1 by r plus the second integrating constant which is c2 now we need to imply the boundary conditions so at at radius r equal to r1 what do you get you get that the temperature is mentioned as t1 and at r equal to r2 that means we are dealing with the outer radius now the temperature is predefined as or pre-assumed as t2 now we need to solve some simple equations and after solving the equations we will get the values of this these two constants so it will give us c1 c1 can be so just uh, give me some time and i will rewrite the equation that means i will rewrite the constant so this is a very uh, simple problem that means you need to just put uh, t1 equal to minus c1 by r1 plus c2 t2 equal to minus c1 by r2 plus c2 then you need to solve this equation and after that you can find the values of c1 and c2 so doing this process i am just uh, going so we get c1 
equal to T1 minus T2 divided by R1 minus R2 into R1 R2. C2 is equal to T1 plus T1 minus T2 divided by R1 minus R2 into R1 R2. So, we know this is our fundamental temperature distribution equation. We will put the values of C1 and C2 here. And after putting the values of C1 and C2, we obtain this equation. So, this equation needs to be simplified. Okay, so I am just clearing this up uh, now. After clearing, so let us deal with this equation. So, now you can see that this can be written as T equal to T1 plus I would like to take this term as common simple mathematics here t1 minus t2 divided by r1 minus r2 r1 r2 okay i am taking this part as a common and it will be okay sorry i have uh, i have missed a r1 here so please check it here i am mr r1 there so after getting this we will simply write this 1 by r1 minus 1 by r now i would intend to transfer this equation into a dimensionless form okay so how we can do th do this we will simply write t minus t1 so t minus t1 leaves with this term and we can divide this whole equation by this term. So now here on the left side, on the left side, you can see all the terms are regarding the temperature. That means it is a dimension less format. So this, this term doesn't have any units. And here we can write, here we can write, ultimately after uh, solving the equations for these values, we will get uh, R2 by R1, R2 by R1 into R minus R1 divided by, we will get R1 minus R2. So this is our dimensionless format, where on the left side you see all the terms are regarding the temperature and on the right side of this equation you will see all the terms represents the different radiuses. So this is your specific radius at where where you need to know the temperature. So if you want to know the temperature at a certain radius, so suppose you want to know the temperature of the sphere at this point. So you need to calculate this value, you need to know the value of this R and then you need to know the inner radius, the inner uh, radius which is maintained at a certain temperature T1, you also need to know the outer radius and the temperature at which the outer radius is maintained. Then you can easily found out, uh, find out this temperature T, which is your unknown at a certain radius R. Okay, so this is uh, how you can obtain the temperature distribution at any certain point. Okay, so this is how we can obtain the temperature at any spherical um, wall where one dimensional steady state heat conduction is going on. So this is sometimes called, a, called as dimensionless format of the temperature distribution in a spherical wall. Okay, so now we have uh, discussed this temperature distribution issues. Now let us see what is the heat transfer rate uh, at which this uh, this one dimensional heat conduction is going on. Okay, so from Fourier's law, we know this heat transfer rate, this heat transfer rate can be written as Ka dt dr. Okay, so this dt dr term represents the temperature gradient, that means change of temperature with respect to the change in radius. Now here you can see uh, only this term, this term is uh, associated with R. That means this term can, can be changed, okay, because of the derivation. This is the uh, 
only term which can be changed. So we will not bother about this uh, this um, other terms. We will take this uh, this specific term only. So while so let us do this derivation first. Then we will calculate this heat transfer. That means ddr of it will be t1 minus t2 so this is your constant part which is not going to change with respect to the radius okay so the term which is only going to change is this minus 1 by r okay so this is your only one term which is going to change so you get after derivation you know that this t1 t2 r1 and r2 they are constant okay so they are not going to change so after the derivation you will get t1 minus t2 r1 minus r2 uh, and this term would give you 1 by r square okay so this term will provide you the integration as 1 by r square now we would like to put this uh, derivative value here so here let us find uh, the value of this heat transfer rate along the spherical wall so it can be written as minus k now you know for a spherical wall the area of heat transfer can be written as 4 pi r square so this is very simple um, geometry you know these things and here we can put the value which we have just obtained after the derivation so t1 minus t2 divided by r1 minus r2 into r1 r2 divided by 1 by r square so now you can see now you can see this term and this term they are alike so after doing the relevant calculations we can finally write the heat transfer rate along the spherical walls as 4 pi k okay so 4 pi k into t1 minus t2 divided by r2 minus r1 and i have uh, left these terms so it would be r1 r2 okay so 4 pi r1 r2 k into t1 minus t2 divided by r2 minus r1 this is your heat transfer rate uh, when one dimensional steady state heat conduction is going on in a spherical wall now you know from the concept of thermal resistance which we have applied so many times for the cases of plane walls and cylinders you know what is the concept of thermal resistance so i am not going uh, into that discussion i will just simply rewrite the terms in the format of uh, thermal resistance okay so you can write this equation r2 minus r1 divided by 4 pi this is your 4 pi r1 r2 k so you know this term this r2 minus r1 divided by 4 pi r1 r2 k this is your thermal resistance for uh, a spherical wall when one dimensional steady steady state heat conduction is going on so you can write uh, th as r2 minus r1 divided by 4 pi r1 r2 k so this is your thermal resistance which is uh, observed by a by the heat when it is traveling through the spherical walls which has the radius the inner radius of r1 and the outer radius of r2 okay so this information could be very important you will understand when we will be dealing with the composite spherical walls this this term plays so this term 
plays uh, a very important role okay so this temperature distribution this is your heat transfer rate and this is your thermal resistance so these are the three findings from the uh, total derivation okay so these three can be found from the total derivation okay and you need to remember all these three formats because uh, while solving the numerical problems it will help you a lot okay so let us see let us now see how these equations how these findings can be incorporated for the cases of uh, one dimensional steady state heat conduction through the composite spheres okay so when you will find that there is a uh, composite spherical arrangement then how you can apply the concept of heat conduction here okay so this is our primary objective now so let us uh, give me some time and i will draw the electrical analogy part or the electrical circuit by which i hope you will be able to understand this equation or this case uh, the heat transfer through the composite spheres you can understand understand it in a better way so let us draw this uh, electrical analogy so when we consider that uh, heat is flowing in the radial direction through a three layer composite spherical shell then we can draw this circuit okay please don't concentrate on this diagram because i will uh, explain the characteristics of this diagram uh, in in a few minutes but let us uh, just hear this okay so when heat so let us consider that heat is flowing through the spheres which has a three layer uh, three layers okay the composite sphere has three separate layers that means three three specific materials have been included in this composite sphere now for that for that case we need to draw an electrical circuit like this and you know that the summation of the thermal resistances can be written as uh, uh, r1 plus r2 plus r3 so we are dealing with the conduction resistances only okay so this is a hypothetical case it is not regarding to this uh, diagram okay now you know we have uh, just now derived this r1 can be written as we have already derived this formula just a uh, few minutes ago and we can write 4 pi k1 so you need to remember this this uh, form okay so it will be r2 minus r1 and in case of the resistance r2 it will be r3 minus r2 divided by 4 pi k2 so we are talking about a separate material here, uh, here which has been composed okay so it will be uh, r2 r3 so just remember this format and then you can uh, go on writing the formula okay so it is basically a repetition just uh, but the terms are going on changing okay so it is very simple if you remember the uh, format of this formula then it will be very simple to write when um, when you need to solve the problems okay so it will be r three r four okay so this is your net resistance okay now what happens here in this diagram here you can see there is a uh, heat transfer by convection going on through the spheres now in the inner inner sphere you can see uh, hot fluid is there and in the outer case a cold fluid here is present so heat is tra transferring between this hot fluid and this cold fluid okay so here in this case you also need to consider the convective resistances okay now you know this formula q is equal to h into a into delta t now for spherical surfaces you know this area would be written as 4 pi r square okay so let us consider this case 
and we can write this q uh, we are dealing for the convection case mind it so for the inner inner uh, sphere we can write this equation hi refers to the convective heat transfer coefficient at the inner sphere the area would be 4 pi r1 square okay and just write the temperature difference as delta t so now it can be written as delta t divided by h i 4 pi r i square now this is your this 1 by uh, this uh, 1 by h i into 4 pi r, r i square refers to the convective resistance so, so this this term this convective resistance term now needs to be added along with this okay so you can see uh, we are obviously talking about a three layered composite sphere where at the inner surface there is a hot fluid and at the outer surface there is a cold fluid okay so convection is going on uh, from the uh, hot fluid to the inner surface of the sphere and convection is going on between the outer outermost um, layer of the sphere and between the cold fluid here it is mentioned as air okay i hope you are getting my point so here you need to add this rci that means resistance because of convection at the inner uh, innermost layer and here you need to add up this convective resistance because of the convection heat transfer between the outermost layer of the sphere and the cold fluid okay so if there is convection going on then also you need to also add up the thermal resistance which is observed by the heat uh, because of the convection heat transfer that is my point you know we have deal these problems in case of cylinder so it is quite similar to cylinder and hope and i hope that you will be you will easily understood this problem so with this understanding uh, i would like to also mention a special uh, special case which i had mentioned in the cases of uh, cylinder also in the case of cylinder we might remember that we had derived a concept of logarithmic mean area okay now here i would like to mention you that we can also derive a separate concept of area okay now the heat conduction through the sphere can be considered or can be analogous to the heat transfer via the plane wall which is having a certain thickness of delta which is delta is r1 minus r2 okay this is the thickness of the plane wall so what we are trying to do we are trying to compare the heat transfer between the sphere and we are trying to develop a formula which can be applied for the plane wall also that means in the formatting of the plane wall we want to write the heat transfer rate for a sphere and then we will see how these uh, two equations two formats can be related with each other and from this concept how we can generate the concept of a different area okay so the heat transfer is going through a plane wall which has a thickness of delta and delta is nothing but r1 minus r2 and the area of the plane wall let us consider this area as a mean okay am is the area now you know that for plane wall this can be written as k a t1 minus t2 divided by delta so this is our general formulation for heat transfer rate for calculation of heat transfer rate when the heat is traveling through a plane wall now for this case we can write a m here and we can change this delta into r1 minus r2 now what we have found for the sphere so we will be writing the heat transfer rate 
So the transfer rate for a sphere it can be written as 4 pi k r1 r2 into t1 minus t2 divided by r1 r2 so what is our motive here we need to find a relationship between the heat transfer rates for the sphere and the plane ball when we have considered that this plane ball has a thickness of r1 minus r2 and it has a mean area of am now considering these two heat transfer rates or uh, equaling these two heat transfer rates we can understand that this mean area can be written as 4 pi r1 r2 so it is pretty simple mathematics here you need to just uh, equate these two equations that is q dot p is equal to q dot s and then you can find this relation now consider this uh, area am that refers to a certain sphere which has a, an area of am that means it will have the radius as rm okay so you are considering this sphere sphere has a radius of rm and area of am then we can uh, represent this am in terms of rm square and we can equate these two equations okay so 4 pi rm square becomes equal to 4 pi r1 r2 and you can simply write now this rm is equal to root over of r1 r2 so which is this root over of r1 r2 can be understood as the geometric mean between this r1 and r2 radiuses okay now this rm can be considered as the geometric mean radius okay so geometric mean radius that is the word please remember it so geometric mean radius okay now from this concept from the concept of geometric mean radius you can easily understand that this area this area am obviously refers to the geometric mean area okay now you can understand the um, uh, relationship between the am which we had considered for the plane wall and the radiuses of the sphere the inner radius is r1 here and the outer radius r2 here okay now we had derived the same kind of formula for the cylindrical heat transfer cases and remember we had find this area this mean area as logarithmic mean area so if you are able to remember the concepts of logarithmic mean area and geometric mean area then you would be able to rewrite the formula in this term because the heat transfer rate for a plane wall it is easy to remember but you need to understand that when you are dealing with the heat transfer cases for cylindrical or spherical wall the thickness the thickness is considered in the terms of r1 minus r2 now this r1 and r1 minus r2 is same for both the cylindrical and spherical cases and this mean area does change in case of cylinders it is considered as the logarithmic mean area which can be expressed as a1 minus a2 divided by ln of a1 a2 but in case of spheres it can be considered as geometric mean area so if you if you are able to remember these two basic concepts then it will be very easy for you to understand okay and you will be able to rewrite the formulas for spherical heat transfer cases or uh, cylindrical heat transfer cases you don't do, do, don't need to remember the uh, large or the long formulas okay you can simply replace this am in terms of logarithmic mean area and am in terms of geometric mean area that means here this area would be root over of a1 a2
okay so if you are able to remember this then you will be simply uh, able to rewrite the heat transfer formulas for cylindrical as well as spherical cases okay so with this let us now take a problem regarding the spherical heat transfer cases uh, which will help you a lot okay which will help you a lot uh, regarding the uh, understanding of heat transfer for uh, spheres okay so just uh, i am i'll be just reading the problem and then we will move on to the solution part a hollow sphere of inner radius 30 mm and outer radius 50 mm is electrically heated at the inner surface at a rate of 10 to the power 5 watt per meter square at the outer surface it dissipates heat by convection into a fluid at 100 degrees celsius and a heat transfer coefficient at 400 watt per meter square kelvin determine the temperature at the inside and the outside surfaces of the sphere it may be assumed that there is no energy generation and the thermal conductivity of the material is constant at 15 watt per meter kelvin so let us write the data which have been provided here and then move on to the solution part okay so now we can see that uh, the hollow sphere has inner radius of 30 millimeter so r1 is represented as 30 millimeter and outer radius of 50 millimeter so this r2 has been represented as 50 millimeter now it is electrically heated at the inner surface at a rate of 10 to the power 5 watt per meter square so this is a very important term here here it represents the heat flux okay heat flux is what heat flux refers to the heat transfer rate uh, at uh, divided by the area the area is always normal to the direction of heat transfer okay so this is your heat flux okay this quantity please remember it this quantity represents heat flux now we can calculate this heat transfer rate from this uh, equation you know that uh, the area of the sphere uh, considering the inner radius as r1 or 30 millimeter we can write this area as 4 pi r1 square but uh, one might ask a question why we are considering this inner inner area only because here it is specifically mentioned that is electrically heated at the inner surface so we need to consider the inner area okay so it would be multiplied by 10 to the power 5 putting the value of r1 equal to um, 30 millimeter that is 0 .00, 0 0.003 meter okay so this is your uh, inner radius and if you calculate it you will get the value of 1130.4 kilo watt okay so this is the net heat transfer rate okay now if you remember the basic idea of heat transfer when it is compared to the terms of electrical uh, electrical energy transfer then we can write this q is the temperature difference that means we can write t1 minus t o now one might ask a question from where this t o have been evolved okay this would be r1 only and this will be r2 okay so so let me explain how i have drawn this electrical circuit so here you can see this inner inner surface has been heated by electrical energy and at the outer surface it dissipates heat by convection so uh, when the heat is being transferred from the inner to the outer surface then it is transferring by the conduction mode but when the heat is transferring from the outer surface it is quite easy to un understand and it is also mentioned here at the outer surface 
it dissipates heat by convection into a fluid at 100 degrees Celsius. So we can also mention that this TO which is the temperature of this fluid now this can be written as 100 degrees Celsius. Okay the question is is that you need to calculate this T1 and this T2. So this is the uh, rate of heat transfer. Now this one this R1 represents the conduction resistance. Okay so the thermal resistance because of the conduction heat transfer and this R2 refers to the convection resistance. So this convection is taking place between the outer surface and the fluid which is at 100 degrees Celsius. So here because of the two modes of heat transfer we need to, uh, we need to consider two different thermal resistances. Okay. So we can write this Q dot is equal to T1 minus TO divided by R1 minus R1 plus R2. Again we can also consider that for this case we can write T2 minus TO divided by R2 and remember that we are considering the convection heat transfer only here. Since the same heat is being traveling through this uh, sphere, this hollow sphere, then the heat transfer, the magnitude of heat transfer remains same. So according to the principles of heat transfer and its analogy with the electrical circuits, we can simply write this. Now we have already found this value. We know this Q dot which is uh, 1130.4 kilowatts. We know this TO, it is already mentioned 100 degrees Celsius, but we don't know the values of R1 and R2. Okay, so let us find out how we can calculate this R1 and R2. So, this is the conduction resistance in the case of sphere. So, you must remember the thermal resistance formula which can be represented as R2 minus R1 4 pi K R1 R2. This K refers to the thermal conductivity of the surface of the spherical surface. Okay. Now if you uh, put the specific values you will get you know this uh, K. K is given as 15 watt per meter Kelvin you know R2 as uh, 50 millimeter you need to convert this into meter also because all the calculations need to be done in meter okay so it would be 0 0.05 meter and uh, so we have found out uh, all the values and then we will just simply do the calculation which will yield the value of uh, 0.0708 so you need to do, do the calculation by yourself so that it is uh, absolutely clear to you and now moving on to the second resistance this is because of the convection heat transfer between the outer surface of the sphere and the fluid which is at uh, 100 degrees Celsius and if you remember it can be represented as 1 by 4 pi here you need to consider the outer radius obviously because heat transfer is taking place between the outer surface and the fluid which is maintained at 100 degrees Celsius so remembering or uh, writing the formula of thermal resistance for a spherical surface okay this is your formula this is your resistance and you know this H is 400 it is mentioned here it dissipates heat by convection into fluid at 100 degrees Celsius and the heat transfer coefficient at 400 watt per meter square Kelvin so this H is nothing but so let us write here H is 400 watt per meter square Kelvin okay so putting the uh, specific values we'll get this convective resistance as 
zero point zero seven nine six. Okay, it would be zero point zero seven nine six Kelvin per watt. So now we have found out all the resistances. Since there were only two different resistances, now we have calculated the conductive and the convective resistance. Now we would like to imply this formula. Okay, so let uh, let me clear this because we will not require this. So equating this equation, this Q dot. What is this Q dot? We have found out this Q dot is one one three zero point four. Now we know this T one T one is our unknown here, and we know this. T O, which is hundred, it is already mentioned. I have just uh, I have just cleared this uh, details here, the, but you can find it from the uh, from the previous frames. You can easily find it that this T O has been mentioned at hundred degrees Celsius, and you know this R one as zero point seven zero eight, and R two as zero point zero seven nine six. So if you add it up, you will get 0.1504. Okay, this is the net thermal resistance. So now you simply need to do a very easy algebraic calculation. That is multiplying these two and adding this with 100, which will give you the result of uh, 270. Degree Celsius. Okay, so now we have found out uh, we have uh, found out the temperature at which the inner sphere or the inner radius of the sphere has been maintained at. Okay, so the T1 refers to 270 degree Celsius. Similarly, similarly we can write this equation. That means it would be. Uh, so I am just clearing it, clearing it. Okay, so here, here it would be T two. We are referring to this equation, mind it. T two minus T O divided by R two is equal to Q dot. So T two would be. But here we need to change this resistance because we have to keep in mind that in this case we have to consider the convective. Resistance only. So the, this T2 uh, here, it would be represented as 0.0796. Okay, 0.0796. So this 0.0796 is your convective resistance, which we have already calculated. And after doing the simple calculations, we will find that the value of T2. Becomes near about to 190, 190 degree Celsius. So thus we can calculate the temperatures of the inner sphere and the outer sphere at which uh, it is maintained. Okay, so this is the basic way. So you need to understand the modes of heat transfer which is going on, and you need to consider the thermal resistances because of this heat transfer, and then you need to draw the electrical circuit. And if you have uh, Completed the electrical circuit, then it becomes a very easy problem, because most of the problem in most of the cases you need to consider the thermal resistance, and then you need to solve the problem. So the methodology to solve the problems is almost same everywhere, be it cylinder, be it sphere, or be it composite planes. Okay, so it is almost same. So with that, uh, let us uh, give you some problems for assignment. So I will show you. the assignments and uh, we will end our lecture here so in the next session we will discuss the topics of critical radius of insulation so till that uh, goodbye thank you all for uh, participating in this lecture for hearing this lecture out okay goodbye